it's Ashley and I'm back with episode 26 of the web novel marry my husband and this is why are you here in ho unho 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 <laughs> Miss Young that's a bit Juron trailed off setting aside how she felt about Suman as a human Suman, Suman was a contract employee who had only worked at the company for two months now. She didn't have the skills for an important project like this. I know her ability might be lacking. I'll teach her myself, Jiwon said. I understand the two of you are close, but this is a division-wide important project. There isn't much time. If someone makes a mistake, it will affect the entire division, not just the entire team members. Not just the other team members. And if this project was successful, Suman would likely be acknowledged by being promoted to a full-time employee. Joran was disappointed in Jiwon, thinking that was why she requested this. It's not what you think, Jiwon replied. As she didn't mind Joran's assumption, she lowered her voice. That paraboiled octopus will probably try to ruin this project. Paraboiled octopus? <laughs> Joran laughed. Jiwon grinned. You know that. You know that. Jiwon pointed to the top of her head. Suddenly, Joran understood what she meant. Oh, him. Yes, him. Just like that, Jiyoung Uk became paraboiled octopus. Parboiled octopus. He would probably feel quite wronged if he knew. After all, there was still a little puff of hair on top of his head. He's furious at you because of that written account he had to do. A cornered octopus will bite the cat or whatever they say. Sure, but how does Parabo factor into this? Parabo? <laughs> That's a good one. Jiwon asked. Paraboiled octopus. Parbo for short. Jiwon snorted. <laughs> gotcha. Like that, G <laughs> Joan Oak's nickname was finalized, Parabo. Parabo will wreak havoc on this project. We're already short on time. We can't have anyone pestering us. What does that have to do with Miss Joan? Joran asked. Parabo likes her. Joran's mouth dropped open wider than the rim of her cup. Has he lost his marbles? Did he lose his conscience with his hair? <laughs> he was already nearing his 40s. He'd never had a proper girlfriend, and he was half bald. The idea that he coveted a young woman in her 20s made Joran revolted and furious. That's why he's bald, Jiwon nodded. <laughs> True. Joran massaged her temples. So essentially, what you're saying is that Parabo won't foil the team if Miss Jung's on it. Right. But if she's not on it and we wait until he attacks us first, we won't finish by the summer deadline. I'll do my best to do at least one and a half people's worth of work. It was comical how Jiwon said one and a half people's so seriously. Joran giggled. When her laughter subsided, she nodded. Suman had inadvertently gained a chance to earn her place as a full-time employee. Starting with Jiwon, the team was formed. Joran organized the roster and took it to Ji Hyuk's desk the next day. Section Chief Joran Yang, Section, Ch bleh, Section Chief Jiwon Kang, Senior Staff Members Suman, Suwon Park, Staff Members Shong. Seo Kyung Yoon, staff member Suman Jong. Ji <laughs> Hyuk's eyes moved down the list. Joran handed him. He paused at the bottom and pointed at Suman's name. She lacks experience. You know this is an important project, don't you? I think she'll come up with more creative ideas because of her lack of experience. This is a new product, so I want fresh minds. Joran recited the response she'd prepared beforehand. Fortunately, Ji Hyuk nodded. The creation of the team is up to the team leader, so I won't speak further on it. Good luck. With that, the team was approved. Everyone was surprised when they saw that the roster 
when they saw the roster, but nobody more so than Jong Uk. Joran barely stifled her laughter at the expression he made when he read it. There went his chance to take out his anger on her. Would the project team for the new product please gather in the meeting room? Joran said. The team members stood and headed for the meeting room. Suman arrived last, wearing an irked expression. Usually roles are designated after a discussion, but as you already know, we're short on time, Joran began. I've taken the liberty of temporarily assigning everyone's role. I'm sure you all know we'll need to be flexible and take on as much as we can, even beyond our assigned roles, right? <clears throat> Joran cleared her throat and handed everyone packets. <clears throat> Miss Kang will be my general assistant. She's also in charge of communicating with the development division and manufacturers. Mr. Park and Mr. Yoon, please work together to brainstorm ideas for the package design and in-store st sales statistics. Tactics. <laughs> Lastly, Jiong, Miss Jiong, you will be in charge of surveying. Please examine the preferences of a random selection of customers. We'll divide up any additional tasks and come up with them as we go. Any questions? Um, Miss Yang? Suman tentatively raised her small hand. What exactly do you mean surveying a random selection of customers? You'll be surveying people at markets that carry our customers' products. You'll be surveying people at our at markets that carry our company's products or anywhere our target audience gathers. Give them samples and examine their reactions. Suman stiffened. She could already see herself in an apron and a hairnet shouting at people to try their products at the market. She hadn't come all the way to Seoul to do a part-timer's job. D do you think there are any other tasks I could do, Miss Yang? As you know, I'm an introvert. She smiled, swallowing her pride. However, Juron shook her head. Miss Kang has a good rep Miss Kang has a good reputation with the other divisions because her work is quick and accurate. Mr. Park was formerly a designer, and Mr. Yoon studied in-store sales tactics in school. Whereas you're bright, smart, and approachable. I assign the roles based on everyone's abilities. If you don't think you can do this, please hand over your spot on the team to someone else. Only one other person could inherit this chance if Suman refused it. The other contract employee, Hugh Yeon. Suman didn't want to survey people, but she would hate Hugh Yeon becoming a full-time employee even more. Exhaling, Suman took her head and dropped her hand. She shook her head and dropped her hand. You're not having lunch? Minwan asked Jiwon, who was still at her desk. I don't feel like it. You should go eat. She felt more weary than normal today. She desperately wanted to down a cold Americano rather than eat any food. Are you feeling unwell? Should I buy you some porridge? Minwan asked. I'm not sick. I'm fine. You can go. Hurry up and leave. <laughs> Jiwon shook her an, an imaginary fly swatter at him. It must have worked because Minwan left the office with a few others, although he kept glancing back at her. Finally, time for some coffee. Jiwon stood in the elevator hall, headed for the cafe in front of the building. She planned to cool her head with a sandwich and some coffee. Miss Kang, why is that guy calling my name? Yes, Mr. Yu, Jiwon looked back. You're not eating? She shrugged. I don't have an appetite. I'm just going to have some coffee. I'm about to buy coffee. Stay here. I'll buy it for you. She wrapped her arms around her waist. No, it's fine. I want to walk a little. Then let's go together. Ji Hyuk pressed the elevator button. You're drinking coffee? Yes. Ji Hyuk took a step towards her. Ji Won smelled a familiar cologne. She didn't remember where she'd smelled it before, but it was a scent she knew. However, she was certain Ji Hyuk had never worn it before. What is it? Ji Hyuk looked down at Ji Won, who had unknowingly uh, stooped to smell the cologne. Oh, uh, your cologne smells nice. I apologize. Her cheeks flushed. Most people would say thanks or give the name of the cologne. Ji Hyuk just stood there staring at the elevator. He was a strange person. You're not having lunch either, she asked. I normally don't eat, he said. Oh, 
So that's why she'd never seen him in the cafeteria. Jiwan shut her mouth as they walked to the cafe. However, once they arrived, something seemed off. There should only be about five or six people here, since it was lunchtime. Instead, people were lined up at the counter to buy coffee. There's a lot of people here, <clears throat> Ji Hyuk said dryly. He touched Jiwan's shoulder. A woman with hands, two hands full of coffee tiptoed by. Oh, thank you. Jiha quickly removed his hand. The place where his warm hand had been felt empty now. After a long wait, Jiwan and Jihyuk turn turn finally came. Jiwan stepped up to the counter, about to order, when her mouth dropped open like a clam in hot water. Unho bake? No matter how she shook her head or rubbed her eyes, the employee at the counter, wearing a brown apron, apron was clearly Unho. Unho lifted his head and grinned at Jiwan. Why are you here? It was Jiwan's turn to order, but Jiwan just stood there, forgetting to pull out her wallet. Two large Americanos and one ciabatta sandwich, Jihyuk ordered. Does he not recognize him, or is he just pretending not to? We've met before, Unho said. The ciabatta sandwich is on the house. It's fine. Please add it to the order. Jihyuk looked <laughs> Ji Hyuk Ji Ji Hyuk looked the smiling Inho straight in the eyes as he held out his card. Ji Wan belatedly pulled herself together. She was about to say something to Unho, but grumbles from the long line behind her forced her to take a seat instead. It's your classmate, Ji Hyuk remarked as he sat across from her. Ji Wan hadn't done anything wrong, but her shoulders rounded anyway. Uh yes. Do you know why he's suddenly working here? Is he asking me or interrogating me? Jiwan regretted coming here. She sipped her coffee. Things had definitely gotten twisted. Suddenly, Unho worked just outside her workplace? That had never happened in her past life. She didn't know what to do. I'm not sure. I didn't know he was working here until now. T to be honest, she had a tiny idea why he was here, but she wanted to ignore it. You're my crush. Unho Bake liked Jiwan Kang. The words sometimes popped into her mind before she fell asleep, making her heart clench. Now they drifted into her mind again. It's been seven years since we graduated. I kept this phone on me anyways, just waiting for you to contact me. Do I look disturbed enough to invest seven years into a prank? It was plausible. He was so devoted that he'd carried around a nearly broken phone for seven years. I think I know, Ji Hyuk suddenly said. Ji Wan lifted her head in surprise. Just then, the pager on the table vibrated. I'll get the coffees. Ji Wan anxiously watched Ji Hyuk walk to the counter. Over his shoulder, Unho waved at her. Ji Wan waved back, but she timidly lowered her hand when Ji Hyuk turned around with the tray. Thank you. I'll buy it next time. Feeling embarrassed, Jiwon pulled her coffee closer and stuck a straw in the cup. If you insist, usually people say things like, it's fine or it's all good, but Ji Hyuk eyed her with an emotionless expression. You can buy it tomorrow. Jiwon stared at Ji Hyuk. Tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow. Here? She asked. Even better if it's not here, he shrugged. You don't have to buy it if you don't want to. Who in the world would say they didn't want to buy coffee in this situation? Jiwon had no choice. Sure, at lunch. Even better if it's not during lunch, Ji Hyuk replied. Then dinner? Let's do that. <laughs> Ji Hyuk drank his iced Americano. It seemed like he only took two sips, but his cup was already half empty. Jiwon downed her coffee to match Ji Hyuk's speed, not anticipating the uncomfortable situation that awaited her. Jiwon! A familiar voice called her name from the entrance. Please, not her. Jiwon turned like an ungreased robot. Huh? You're here too, Mr. Yu? Suman dug through the bustling crowd and sat next to Jiwon. Fortunately, she was short, so she hadn't noticed Unho. Have you eaten yet, Mr. Yu? Minwon appeared behind Suman and sat beside Ji Hyuk. 
Oh shit. Mm. Yes, just a minute. Jihyuk typed on his phone. It looked like he was sending a message to someone. Across from Jiwon was Jihyuk. Next to her was Sumin, and diagonal, well, diagonal from her was Minwon. While Unho stood at the counter, Jiwon gave up on drinking coffee and just sat there. She hoped time would pass quickly. Oh, everyone's here. Just then, Hu Yian arrived like a savior. Did you come get coffee? There are so many people. You said you weren't going to eat my lifesaver. How can you drink coffee on an empty stomach? Yeah, there are so many people. I should get going. Juwon stood, but Hu Yian pushed her back into her seat. You're not done with your coffee yet. Mr. Park, Miss Jong, do you want to move someplace? Move someplace else? There won't be as many people if you walk a bit further. Let's drink somewhere else. I'll buy. How uncomfortable. Mm. <laughs> that had to be so awkward. Three dudes are there. Two of them genuinely like her. One, he just wants to keep her for himself so nobody else can have her. And one is there because she's evil. And she's like, oh, no. She can't be going somewhere without me knowing to making sure she's not having a good time. I got to ruin her life at any possible turn at any possible moment. <sighs> Oof. Drama. All right. So let's go ahead and read chapter 27. Oh, wait. That was 27. Did I say 26? Oh, my gosh. Well, that was chapter 27, y'all. So, chapter 28. Suman is sad. Oh, wait, no. Oh, my gosh. It tricked me. I clicked the chapter and it went all the way to the end and I've never even read it. So I don't know why it would load from there. So let's see. Okay. So we are on chapter 27. You tricked me. You tricked me yonder. <laughs> uh, department head and a manager. No, Hugh Yeon, not this. I just want to go back to the office. Jiwon made desperate eye signals at Hugh Yeon, but Hugh Yeon must not have noticed. She urged on the two hesitant cockroaches. <laughs> I'm sorry, her calling them cockroaches is so fitting. It, it threw me. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> she urged on the two hesitant cockroaches. Come on, we don't have time to get coffee during lunch if we stay here. I'm fine, Miss Yu. I'll just drink coffee from the break room, Minwan said. <laughs> Mr. Park, you know you can't just sit around at a cafe without ordering anything. Come on. Yu Yian nudged him. Suman and Minwan stood up. Having no other choice, Jiwon forced a smile that did not look natural in the slightest. Then she turned to Ji Hyuk. Should we head up? Uh, should we head up now too? Did he not hear her? Ji Hyuk made no response. Instead, he looked somewhere else. We'll be off. See you at the office. Hu Yian left, practically dra dragging Suman and Minwon out the door. She looked like a farmer herding cows. Is it Mrs. Yu? Is it? Is it Miss Yu adorable? I feel like I'm always in a better mood whenever I'm with her. Jiwon faked a high tone at the awkward situation. Jihyuk took a break from sitting, stirring his coffee. Are you talking about Miss Hu Yeon Yu? Yes, isn't she cute? It would be so nice to have a younger sister like her, Jiwon sighed. Jihyuk pressed his lips together for a moment. To each his own. Right. The two of them are dating. Jiwon closed her mouth, recalling the truth she'd forgotten about for a moment. She'd brought up a forbidden topic. Meeting the parents? Jihyuk suddenly said after a long silence. Meeting the parents? She repeated. Yes, meeting the parents to talk about marriage plans? She blinked. 
uh, you're meeting your girlfriend's parents? I'm asking if you are. What kind of verbal sparring was this? Jiwan's hand froze in midair as she cut her sandwich. Are you asking if I have plans to meet my boyfriend's parents to discuss marriage? Yes. Another silence descended. Jiwan had never felt this awkward with others, but everything about Jihyuk was strangely awkward and uncomfortable. He had an incredible talent for inducing this feeling in her. It's not really to discuss our marriage, but why are you asking? Jihyuk slowly lowered his gaze. After a moment, he raised it to hers again. I need to adjust your office schedules. Oh, adjusting the schedules? Jiwon tried her best to understand the nonsensical answer. We're meeting next weekend. No matter what happens, I'll make sure it doesn't affect work. The probability of a meeting with Min Wan's parents affecting her work was about as low as mercury, splitting in half and crashing into earth. But Ji Hyuk's expression went grave. Must you schedule it so quickly? Yoon Hyu's words popped into Ji Wan's mind again as she watched Ji Hyuk's forehead wrinkle. It's obvious. He's totally in love with you. But she remembered Ji A's words, too. He's trash. Her spirit sank. Why were men like this? Her heart ached for Hyu Yeon, who had left Ji Wan alone with Ji Hyuk to go to a nearby cafe. Mr. Yu, she said coldly. Ji Hyuk's eyebrows twitched. Whether I meet my boyfriend's parents or get married, it's a personal matter. I already told you it wouldn't affect work. Isn't it beyond your authority to rebuke me? Ji Hyuk's eyebrows furrowed. She couldn't tell if he was angry or surprised. She cleared her throat. <clears throat> I'm grateful you think so highly of my work, but please don't express unnecessary attention for my personal matters. I keep my work and personal lives separate. Her throat felt parched after her declaration. Jiwon gulped the remainder of her coffee. Thank you. I'll head up now. With that, Jiwon took her leave. Ding! The bell on the cafe door tinkled bitterly. Left alone, Ji Hyuk rubbed his forehead. The cafe had nearly cleared out. Lunch time was almost over. Oh, you're still here, Ji Wan's boss. Unho approached with a grin and sat where Ji Wan had been, veins protruding from Ji Hyuk's hands where it rested on the table. What's your name? I think we'll see each other frequently from now on. Why don't we exchange names? Ji Hyuk pulled out a business card and pushed it over the table. Ji Hyuk Yu. UNK Food Marketing Division 1, Department Head. Ji Hyuk Yu. Unho examined the card and put it in his apron. You're already a department head, even though you're so young? That's incredible. Yes. Usually people responded with something like, It's nothing. Unho flinched at his unusual way of speaking. Then he smiled. I don't have a business card. Oh, wait, just a minute. As if he'd suddenly remembered something, Unho went to the counter and returned with a business card. It was the cafe's business card, which doubled as a coupon. He wrote his name on the back and handed it to Ji Hyuk. Unho Bake. I just took over this cafe. I look forward to seeing you more in the future. Ji Hyuk wore a spotless black suit and Eun Ho had an apron over his white shirt. The air tense between the two unblinking men. The battle begins. Why are you so late? Hurry up and fix something for me to eat, Jae Hyun said the minute Juran walked in the front door after a long day. I know she wants to beat his ass. I cannot stand this man. Right now he's at the top. He at the top, and then it's Min Wan, and then it's Su Min. <sighs> at this point in time. Why are you so late? Hurry up and fix something for me to eat, Jae Hyun said the minute Joran walked in the front door after a long day. Jae Hyun was lying on the couch while Yeonji played by herself, like usual. I thought I was used to this by now. Joran lifted Yeonji and scanned the house. Outside her home, she was a proficient professional. Her attitude at work, her social reputation, and her professional 
accomplishments were exceptional. However, the moment she came home, Joran felt like she became a maid, a vacuum cleaner, and a dishwasher. What are you doing? Why aren't you coming inside? Jaehyun asked, irritated. Joran sat Yeonji back down and removed her heels from her swollen feet. We need to talk. Jaehyun scowled at Joran when she turned off the TV. <sighs> what now? I took on an important project at work. So? So, Joran dwelled on this word for a second. She hadn't expected much. She didn't expect anything like, you're amazing, I'm so proud of you, or I'll help you as much as I can. No, maybe she did, but it had been so unrealistic that she quickly brushed off the idea. The deadline is tight. I'll be working overtime for a while because I have to handle my existing tasks as well as the new project. What? That's ridiculous. Jaehyun reacted much more intensely to the overtime than to the news that she'd be putting in, put in charge of an important project. Why is it ridiculous? She replied. What do you mean, overtime? You have a kid. What about the housework? You want me to babysit Yeonji by myself? What housework and babysitting are you talking about? Joran asked incredulously. Jaehyun didn't even put his cereal bowl in the sink after breakfast. How can you maintain a marriage without all those things? You can't take that project or at least leave early to work instead of staying late, he shouted. Joran embraced Yonji and covered her ears. You'll scare her. Why are you shouting? Because it's absurd. Why are you so selfish? Huh. <laughs> you want to talk about fucking selfish, you prick. She didn't have the strength or t uh, time to fight. Joran sighed. Whatever. You choose. Or you are you going to take better care of Yonji? Or are you going to get help from my mom and dad? What if I don't want to do either? He snapped. Leave. Joran replied. Jaehyun blinked, his eyes still riddled with gunk, even though it was evening. What? I'm going to secede with this, pro with this project. I'll get promoted and acknowledged and also receive a higher salary. I can raise Yeonji well if you don't want to. Get out. Ooh, chew him up, girl. Hey, Joran. His jaw dropped. Jaehyun. Joran's voice became more composed. I won't force you, but you know, I took out the loans for this apartment. I'm paying them back myself, right? That's petty, he murmured, bringing up money. Why don't you go earn some if you think I'm petty, she retorted. Jaehyun clenched his fists and trembled. He couldn't even respond. It was pathetic. I'll ask you again. Do you want to be more attentive or should we go get help from my parents? Or do you want me to ask for help from your parents who just had back surgery? Jaehyun's mouth opened and closed like a goldfish. Finally, he cursed in annoyance. Ask for help from your parents. What more do you want me to do by myself here? <laughs> Literally anything, you jerk. <laughs> I guess you're still worried about your parents, huh? Juran was surprised at her cynical thoughts. She shifted Yeonji in her arms. They'll start coming tomorrow. Wash Yeonji up while I clean up and prepare dinner. He pouted but accepted Yeonji without complaint. This was the same Jaehyun who didn't listen even when she cried and begged. While Jaehyun took Yeonji to the bathroom, Joran called her parents. Yes, hello? Her mom answered the phone on the first ring. Mom! Did you just get off work, my princess? She had a lump in her throat as if she'd swallowed a whole egg yolk. Yes, of course. You must be so tire tired. Did you have any issues at work? What about dinner? Her mother asked in a kind voice. Joran felt like crying. She swallowed and feigned a natural tone. I'm about to eat. What about you? Your dad said we should eat spicy pork bone. Spicy pork bone soup. So we're going to that place out front. I was thinking about how you liked the soup when you called. What's Yeonji doing? Her dad's bathing her, Joran replied. Oh, that's good. My son-in-law is great to my princess, isn't he? 
Juron could feel her mom's genuine happiness and relief through the phone. She hesitated. She didn't want to break this peace and joy. Hello, princess, can you hear me? Her dad interrupted. Our daughter is all grown up and has a kid of her own. What do you mean, princess? Hush, I'm on the phone. Give it here. After some bickering, her dad bellowed victoriously. Yeah, hello, is my queen off from work yet? Did you have dinner? What about Yonji and our son-in-law? You said I'm the queen, you old man, her mother called in the background. You can be queen mother since you're old. <laughs> Jeron could practically see her parents affectionately bickering. She chuckled. A tear hung from one eye. Jaehyun's bathing Yonji, and I'm about to eat dinner. Good, our son-in-law's doing great. My baby is too weak to do hard work, her father said. What are you doing calling our daughter baby? She has a child of her own, her mother called. Be quiet. I'm on the phone. Anyway, I'm going to go eat now with your mom. You like spicy pork bone soup too, huh? Let's go eat it, eat it together next time. She wanted to eat the soup now. Joran shook off the thought and cleared her throat. <sighs> Dad, there's something I need to say to you. What is it? Go on. Yonji's dad quit his job. Her dad's boisterous voice instantly quieted. Her mom frantically shook, took the phone from him. Princess, what did you say? Jaehyun quit work? Why? He says he wants to move to a better company, she said. Oh, of course. Her dad recovered his boisterousness. Just give him some time. People sometimes trip in life. You should help each other out as a couple, huh? Goodness, give me the phone. What about you, princess? What about living ex expenses? Should I help you? Her mother asked. I earn money. I took on a big project at work recently. I'll be, promo I'll be promoted if it goes well, Joran said. Really? Ah, oh, my baby's all grown up. Good job. I have such a talented daughter. You're so pretty because you take after my handsomeness. And you're smart too, her dad chuckled. Get it right, honey. Jerron takes after me. Stop jumping in. <laughs> anyway, did you have something to say? Go on, her dad said. Jerron took a deep breath. She felt horrible telling her parents that this was their precious daughter who they even oh who they'd even sent to study abroad oh but this was the only option unless Jaehyun suddenly became a good man like her father miraculously <sighs> i'm going to be busy because of the project um could you come here and watch yonji sometimes she asked you said Jaehyun quit work. Can he watch her? When you we you were young, your mom ran the store while I pretty much raised you, her dad pointed out. Well, <sighs> Yonji's dad is still a bit awkward when it comes to watching kids. He must be too busy preparing to move companies. Really? Hang on, honey, did you make a reservation for the restaurant? Her dad asked. I called them earlier. Good. Have them change it to the biggest size and wrap it up to go, he said. Thwack. Joran heard her dad slap his thigh with a hand as large as the lid of a cauldron. My little baby, stay there. We're going there right now. Let's eat pork bone soup. Aww. And she wanted, so you don't have to worry about cooking. I love her parents. Okay. What? Now? Dad! Dad! Joran shouted the, <laughs> into the disconnected phone. Then she looked at her surroundings, scattered toys, spilled milk, piled dishes, and a princess with dark circles all the way down to her ankles in the mirror. I'm dead meat. She'd forgotten how hasty her dad could be. Six feet tall, 209 pounds, the fiery spirited gangwon born man who'd set up a restaurant for his wife by, se by selling the golden trophy he'd won from wrestling was on his way. Good. 
I'm happy he's on his way. Because her, oh my gosh. Her husband, at this point in the story, <laughs> enemy number one. And I'm ready for enemy number one to get taken out. <sighs> Man. So, the next chapter is chapter 28, Suman is Sad, which we also don't give a fuck about. <laughs> but we we can kind of guess what she's going to be sad about. She's sad because all the men are paying attention to Jiwon. Because she was always beautiful, but now she's taking care of herself and person presenting herself to the world as beautiful. And nobody's paying attention to Suman. Because she's a bitch. <laughs> but I'm going to stop there and I'll be back with chapter 28. Ugh, which is going to be about Suman. But we get to find out how her mind works. So I'm excited for that. Hey, we're back with chapter 28. Suman is sad. What are you doing? I'm done bathing, Yonji. Jaehon said to Joran, who was frantically tidying up. She shoved a pile of toys into a box. Can you put lotion on her and dress her? I'm sweaty. I'm going to take a shower, he said. My parents said they're coming right now, she groaned. What? Jaehyun's eyes widened. Joran snatched up trash from the coffee table and took it to the veranda. What are you talking about? Why are your parents coming right now? Jaehyun asked. He followed her with Yeonji in his arms. I asked them to help us starting tomorrow, but they're coming right now. Hurry up and dress Yeonji, then clean the study. Oh, and I told them you quit, just so you know, she added. Are you mad? Why would you say that? Jaehyun jumped light around like a bunny that had swallowed a pepper. We deceived them for over a year. They'll be over here more often now. How can I lie to them? Jaehyun scowled. I can leave in the morning and come back in the evening. Why don't you ever consider my position? Any remaining respect Joran still had for Jaehyun evaporated. She stared at him, dumbfounded. Then she pulled out the vacuum cleaner. Were you planning to leave the apartment the entire time my parents were here? Do you think I want to stick around? I'm sure your parents will be thrilled to learn their son-in-law quit work and stayed home all day. He crossed his arms. You should have just gone to work early and clocked out on time like I suggested. <laughs> Incredible. So that was why he had agreed to do what she said without protest? Speechless, Joran took Yonji from him and went to the living room. Hey, are you ignoring me? He called. I'm taking care of Yonji right now. They're not, there's not much time left until my parents arrive. Hurry up and clean the study. Jaehyun stood there, glaring at Joran for a moment, then stomped to the study. The people living beneath us are probably going to make a noise complaint. Joran sighed. She spread baby lotion on Yonji's cheeks and patted her skin. Tata? In a good mood after being washed, Yonji shook her stubby legs and arms. Hmm, your dad gave you a bath, didn't he? Dada? Tiny hands gripped Joran's fingers. Her weary mind softened. With a bright smile, she pecked Yonji's stomach. Your grandfather and grandmother will be here soon. Let's put on some pretty clothes while we wait for them, okay? Dada? Dada? She seemed like she was replying to Joran. My precious little baby, my princess. Joran dressed Yonji and tied a ribbon in her hair, trying to eliminate all thoughts of divorce. She couldn't let her precious Yonji grow up without a father. I'm sorry, girl, but you should. Okay. Ding dong. Soon the bell rang. She could see her dad carrying a huge bag in the intercom camera. Why did you come so suddenly, dad? Joran opened the, do opened the door. Jaehyun took the bag from him. Hello, sir. Hey, took you long enough to walk to the door. Her dad entered with a boisterous laugh. Her mom appeared behind him with the shawl on her shoulders. Oh, my Yonji has grown up so much. How adorable. 
Jaehyun, I heard you bath. I heard you bathed her. Yes, I often give her baths when her mom's busy or sick. The lies. Juron flinched at Jaehyun's declaration. Declaration as she took her parents' coats. Her dad's eyebrows lifted about five centimeters. I see. Jaehyun, so you give Yeonji baths when her mom's busy or sick? He set the bag of pork bone soup on the table and sat. Then you'll be giving her baths more frequently now. Your wife's going to be pretty busy. You heard about how amazing our Joran is, winning that new project or whatever it's called. Oh yes, that's why you're here, Jaehyun asked. Joran's mom patted Jaehyun's shoulders. Jaehyun, we got this from our neighborhood's finest shop. It cooled a bit on the way here, so go warm it up. Princess, why are you in that state? I'll look after Yonji. You go and take a shower. You still haven't washed your makeup off. I was busy tidying the house. I'll come back after I freshen up. Joran pulled out a pot for pulled out a pot for the scowling Jaehyun and headed for the bathroom. <sighs> she felt a smile rise to her face as she raised her rinsed her body. How long had it been since she took a carefree shower? It was a good thing she asked her parents for help, like Jiwon had suggested. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go to work, Jiwon muttered as soon as she woke up, pulling her blankets over her head. She wasn't, it wasn't because she felt lazy or didn't want to see Minwon or Suman. It was because of Ji Ji Hyuk. Why can't he just focus on work? Why is he acting like this when he has a girlfriend? Jeez, guys are all the same. She felt a little better after this rant. Jiwon jumped up and prepared for work. Caffeine fueled all employees. When she entered the cafe outside the office to charge up, Unho waved to her. You're here early. Are you going to work? Unho's smiling face lifted her mood that morning. Yep, you open early, she said. I work hard, he shrugged. After Jiwon left work yesterday, she called Unho. They spoke over the phone for quite a while. Unho explained that he took over the cafe because it went up for sale. Apparently, he intended to sell his old cafe anyway. Jiwon half, only half believed him, but she didn't push it. What should I get you? Coffee? He asked. Yeah, one iced Amer. Two mixed grain smoothies, a tall man behind Jiwon cut her off. He put his card on the counter. Jiwon didn't bother to mask her stiff expression. She turned around. Mr. Yu, I was in the middle of my order. I ordered for you two, he replied. I'm going to drink coffee. He shook his head. We'll drink coffee in the evening. Apparently, he planned to hold her to her unwilling promise yesterday. Jiwon pulled her card from her wallet and set it down. Set it over Ji Hyuk's. I'll buy the coffee now. I'm not drinking coffee right now, she shrugged. Then I'll get the smoothies. We promise to drink coffee later, he protested. Unho quietly took both cards. One mixed grain smoothie for Mr. Yu and one iced Americano for Ji Won. Other customers filed in. Ji Hyuk and Ji Won took back their cards, unable to bicker any longer. Miss Kang! Jiwon pretended not to hear Ji Hyuk calling her name. Miss Kang. <laughs> nope, I can't hear you. <laughs> Miss Kang, about the project. Even though she'd returned to the past, she was a salary woman to the bone. Her body instinctively reacted to the word project. Yes. I thought you couldn't hear me. <laughs> damn. Damn. <laughs> Mixed emotions swirled in her eyes. Jiwon pretended not to notice. Go ahead, Mr. Yu. I heard you're the general assistant. Let's finish this conversation tonight. Did he bring up work just so I didn't break off the promise later? Jiwon frowned. Fine, I'll hear what you have to say. She took the Americano, which came out first, and, stro and, and strolled out of the cafe. She was determined to tell... 
<laughs> Hugh yawned if Ji Hyuk attempted anything weird. Just as she reached the lobby elevator, her phone buzzed. It was a text from Unho. Ji Won glanced back at the cafe and flipped open her phone. You have plans with, with Mr. Yu this evening? He probably overheard their conversation. Ji Won typed a response and sipped through her straw. We have something to talk about. Work? Yeah. Come to the cafe. I'll whip up some good coffee. Ingho suggested. I don't want to speak with him that close to the company building. Thanks for being considerate, though. With that, Jiwon ended the conversation. She sometimes imagined what it would have been like if she'd married Unho rather than Minwon. Would she have been happy with the man who'd liked her steadfastly for nearly ten years? <sighs> if only I were a little more courageous. She smiled bitterly. If only. No words sounded more futile than that. The past was the past. It gave people data, but to move on, people needed to look forward towards the future. I'm never getting married again. The elevator arrived with a ding. Jiwon stepped between the people who streamed out. Right before the doors shut, she glimpsed Ji Hyuk behind her. Damn, so he got <laughs> he got on the elevator while she wasn't paying attention. <clears throat> or did he not make it? It seemed like he got on with her. Finally, it's time to leave. Good work today, Miss Kang. Yu Yian leaned on Ji Won's desk as she sighed. You too. It's tiring since your workload increased, isn't it? She asked. I think you're the tired one, my lifesaver. Goodness. Look how pale your lips are. Yu Yian held out her lipstick. Jiwon self-consciously rubbed her lips. Are they? She didn't have time to look in the mirror today. She'd been so busy. This is a new color. Try it. I think it'll look perfect on you. Oh, I... Jiwon's stomach tightened. The whole strange, uneasy situation was a catch-22. Hu Yian clearly wanted to hide her relationship at work. Jiwon couldn't just say, I think your boyfriend likes me, and he asked me to meet him today but she felt extremely uncomfortable going out with him without telling Hu Yian anything. After some deliberation, Ji Wan took the lipstick and stood. I want to put it on in the bathroom. Can you come see how it looks? Yes, yes. Hu Yian trailed on her heels like a large puppy. It was charming and adorable that Ji Wan grew even more uncomfortable. I knew it would be perfect. How does every color look so good on you, life, my lifesaver? Yu Yian bounced up and down, watching Ji Wan apply the lipstick. You should keep it. I tested it yesterday at home and it didn't suit me. It's fine. This is expensive, isn't it? Ji Wan handed it back, but Yu Yian shook her head. It's just trash if I can't use it. Take it. You can buy me one that suits me next time. It was a luxury lipstick from the same brand Yu Yian always used. She must like this brand. Jiwon hesitantly accepted the lipstick and put it in her pouch with a weak smile. Thanks. Um, actually, I have important plans tonight. She waited for Hu Yian to digest the information. After much contemplation, this seemed like the best way to bring it up. Important evening plans? With a guy? Hu Yian's eyes shone a tad too brightly. Well, not exactly. Jiwon checked to see if all the bathroom doors were open. Then she whispered, Mr. Yu wants to drink coffee. Ah. She sounded like an alien. Was she shocked? Jiwon battled her racing pulse and studied Hu Yian. Hu Yian. Oh, yes, with Mr. Yu, a coffee after work. Hu Yian's attempt to look natural made her expression even stranger. One corner of her mouth twitched. Her eyes wide made it look like she was holding back tears. Pity piled on top of the guilt. Ji Wan already felt she didn't know what to do. Should I not go? I didn't want to, but I felt like I should repay him for all the coffee and rides. Of course you should repay him. Hu Yian replied passionately. You should never be in debt to anyone. Go and drink coffee and have dinner. Since it's the evening, from what I saw, it seems like Mr. Yu is rich. Ask him to buy you something delicious. I'm going to repay him. Should I uh, really ask him to buy me something delicious? Jiwon asked. 
Hugh Yeon's pupils quivered like an earthquake. She had likely just spoken gibberish, not even knowing what she was saying. She must be so surprised and hurt. I'm just saying, since you're already out, you should have dinner together. And, yeah, anyway, we should leave. L let's go. Jiwon followed Hu Yeon out. Her conscience throbbed, seeing Hu Yeon chatter like she was fine. Her lunch felt like it would soon reappear. Oh no. Opa, Suman is so sad. Suman pouted. Did you ask me to buy you a drink today because you're upset? Joan Uk po poked Suman's pouting cheeks. Yes, I'm sure Miss Yang divided the work carefully, but still, I'm shy. I can't walk up to people I don't know. Did you talk to her about it? Did you ask for a different task? Suman's shoulders sank. Yes, but Miss Kang has a good reputation with the other divisions, and the others are design majors or something like that. She said she gave this opportunity to Miss Yu if I didn't want it. Opa, I might become a regular employee if this project goes well, right? Jung Uk's anger at Jiwon flared again. What a vulgar wrench. I guess I wrench again. What a vulgar wench. Who did she think she was harassing the new employee? Just drop out of the project if you don't want it to if you don't want to do it, Suman. How can I? I might have to leave the company if I don't become a full time employee. Her already small shoulders drooped even further. It was a pitiful sight. Jong Uk downed his wine like soju. I'll start a project. You can put your name on that, okay? You? Suman whipped to face Joan Ook's. Ugh. The lights of the wine bar reflected from his head like a halo. Then she remembered he didn't have any particular authority anymore. Where would you suddenly get a project? You need to write a proposal. And the last time, just trust me, we need to wait for these samples to come anyway. I'll figure something out in the meantime. Really, Opa? Suman believes in you. Suman smiled at him with their hands clasped. A long time ago, a commercial that Joan Uk had planned when he was a section chief made it big. After that, he was promoted to manager, but since then, he hadn't had any outstanding achievements. He'd failed to be promoted again. In fact, he was lucky to still be a manager. However, the proposal for the commercial that he earned, though that had earned him his spot, was actually the work of a naive contract employee. Mm, of course. Only Joan Uk and the former contract employee knew this secret. In two days, Ji Hyuk would leave on a long business trip. Joan Uk quickly finished his calculations. If he rushed while Ji Hyuk was gone, he had a chance. Okay, so that was the end of chapter 28. And I haven't read comments in a minute, so let me do that. Hugh Yeon is plotting this ship like she's a captain of a destroyer. <laughs> Ugh, how much longer do we have to wait for G1 to find out they are siblings? <gasps> Not people putting spoilers in the comments. Oh, that trash stole someone else's work? What a disgusting person. Jiwon's interpreting all the emotions on Hu Yeon's face incorrectly is actually comical. <laughs> it is. Yes, growing up without a father would be detrimental for a child, but I don't think he's a good husband or a good father anyway. I'm team Juron. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> All right, so that's the end and some of the comments from chapter 28. And I'll see you with chapter 29, Minwan's Bitter Taste of Life. <laughs> okay. And we're back with chapter 29. And it's about Minwan. <laughs> Minwan's Bitter Taste of Life. What's the occasion? You never offered to buy me 
drinks. Jae Young filled Min Won's glass with a grin. Min Won took the bottle and poured Jae Young a glass as well. I think things will turn out well with Ji Won. We made plans to meet my mother. Punk, you look like you're on top of the world. Are you happy? Not at all. Min Won emptied his soju glass and chewed on a piece of meat. What? They're giving you a bonus? He snorted. <laughs> a bonus is nothing. You know what? Yong Tae Ho. You know Yong Tae Ho, right? Jae Jay Young frowned. What about him? He told me to keep this a secret, but I'm telling you, bro. Min Won chuckled and lowered his voice. He gave me some insider info recently. The stock he suggested jumped seven times. And according to him, the moment their new product releases, ten times will sound like child's play. Min Won had been inching to brag. He'd even gifted Ji Won a designer bag with the extra money he'd earn, all to the set all to set the mood for the proposal. He was certain a bright future awaited him. You idiot! Min Won thought Jae Young would be envious to the core, but he shouted instead, What the heck? You said you're jealous, you bastard. You What the heck? Just say you're jealous, you bastard. Did you buy those stocks? How much? Jae Young looked worried. 40 million won. I don't want too much. I'm going to sell them when they reach 400 million won. 400 million won, my ass. Sell it now, you idiot. Jae Young's face turned a different color. Min Won blinked at his friend, confused. Why are you flipping out? Sheesh, I'll buy you some hard liquor once I sell, okay? Don't you know... <sighs> Don't you know what that Jae Young bastard does for a living? Jae Young leaned forward urgently. He said he's a board member of the company I invested in. I hear, I hear he got promoted recently. He works for a pyramid scheme. Did you forget what I told you last time? Jae Young gritted his teeth. Do you know how many people freaking lost money after being tricked by him? Min Wan did recall hearing something like that, but he just shrugged. He's out of that business now. This time he's for real. The stocks actually rose by seven times. You think that happens every day? The stock market was currently in an uproar over people trying to jump on the MW technology bandwagon. Min Wan complimented himself for hopping on the wagon early enough to watch the soaring graphs with ease. <sighs> Idiot. Words won't get through to you. Jae Young grabbed his jacket and leapt to his feet. Where are you going, man? I'm not in the mood anymore. You're going to regret not listening to me in the future. Jae Young gulped his glass of soju and left. <laughs> Immature punk. He's just acting out because he's jealous. Min Wan didn't feel like drinking anymore. He finished the side dishes and stood. He did intended to skip to the gym today, but maybe he would be in a better mood if he went. The gym Min Wan went to always got busy in the evening. He stretched and started walking on the treadmill, steadily increasing the speed. His gaze fixed on the small TV in front of the treadmill. In other news this evening, the news anchor flipped the script in his hand. MW Technology, which was recently spotlighted for their new touchscreen feature, suddenly announced a closure this afternoon. <laughs> MW Technology, Min Wan's eyes widened. MW Technology, <gasps> MW, <laughs> sorry. MW Technology has filed for bankruptcy, which they announced on their homepage. They have not taken any other action since the filing. Current CEO, Kim, has blocked all contacts and fled overseas. Stockholders can expect to suffer large-scale losses. According to what we've just learned, the company operated an illegal pyramid scheme, paying employees incentives for attracting money from investors. Arrgh. All around him, people jumped at the sudden shout. They stared at Min Wan. No! No! <laughs> Sorry. That's so funny. That's what you fucking get, bro. Bro. He frantically smacked the pause button, missed, and flew off the back of the treadmill, landing with a heavy thud. Sir, are you alright? A trainer dashed over and paused the machine. 
Minwan shook off the trainer and urgently punched numbers into his phone. He called Yong Tae Ho, who had told him to invest all the money he had into MW technology. He'd sworn the stocks at the company where he worked would increase. This number is not in service. Please confirm the number and call again. Damn it, that son of a bitch. Minwan went red with anger. <laughs> But all he could do was curse. His stocks, worth 40 million won just a few hours ago, might as well have become toilet paper. On top of that, the stocks from J Pharmaceuticals that he had sold to buy MW Technology shares had increased by five times. If he factored that into his calculations, he'd lost a whopping total of 160 million won. He changed his clothes and bolted outside to flag a taxi. The front of MW Technologies headquarters was flooded with people who'd heard the news. It reminded him of a zombie movie. Where's the President Park? Tell the President to come out, you swindling punks! People poured, pounded on the doors as if they could break them down and storm in. Good lord, my money! My money! Oh my god, my money! Others sat and sobbed on the streets. Please gather here. This isn't the time to be sad. Those of you who would like to prepare for a class action lawsuit, please write your information down here. A few people marched through the crowd, determined to find solutions. Minwan glared at the dark interior of the office, a sense of despair suddenly overwhelming him. He felt like he was really in a zombie movie. Our house, he murmured. Our newlywed house. Funny, that was the first thought Ah, uh, that he had. The house he planned to buy the minute he sold his stocks faded, along with all his other dreams. Jiwan was going to be so disappointed. He just hoped she wouldn't call off the wedding. Minwan got in a taxi again and spontaneously headed to Jiwan's apartment. He couldn't breathe. He was sweating buckets. The only person he could think about was Jiwan. Let me off in front of that convenience store over there. After stopping the driver, Minwan tossed him a few uh, 10,000 won bills and walked to the entrance of the villa. He pressed Jiwan's call button, but there was no response. When he took a closer look, her lights were off. Where did she go? Damn it. It's been hours since we got off work. He didn't have his phone either. He had probably left it at the gym when he rushed out. Left with no other choice, Minwan waited for Jiwan to show. Not too long after he arrived, a taxi stopped before the villa. Seeing Jiwan hobble out of the car, Minwan was so shocked that he momentarily forgot about his toilet paper stocks. Jiwan, why do you look like that? Minwan? Jiwan froze in her torn stockings, bloodied bandages, ruined makeup, bare feet and all. Wait, what? Minwan, what? Sorry. While Minwan and Jay Yang were drinking soju together, Jiwan set two fresh cups of coffee before Jae Hyuk. Ji Hyuk. Here, she sat across from him. They were in warm window seats with sunlight faintly shining through the glass. You said this was after about work, right? Is there a problem? Jiwan asked as formally as she could. Ji Hyuk replied in a business-like tone, I'm leaving for a long business trip the day after tomorrow. While I'm gone, Mr. Kim will take over my role. Ji Won knew how horrific things would get while he was gone. Jung Uk would bellow like he was at karaoke and toss papers in the air like flower petals. Even those employees uncomfortable with Ji Hyuk's strictness would desperately yearn for Ji Hyuk's return. It was also when Jung Uk's harassment of Hu Yian and Joran would really take off. Yes, naturally. But why? I've taken care of things, he said. Anything related to the project can be sent directly to admin uh, by Miss Yang without having to obtain approval from Mr. Kim. You don't have to worry about him. That was unexpected. She didn't think he knew about the problems Joran was having with Jung Uk. After all, he always stayed silent or overlooked it when it happened. You knew? She asked. About what? He blinked. That Mr. Kim delikes, dislikes Miss Yang. Ji Hyuk shrugged. How could I not? I see. 
I thought he didn't know about conflicts between his employees. Jiwon was taken aback by Ji Hyuk's consideration. At the same time, she was curious why he hadn't done anything until now. You probably want to ask why I left it untouched, Ji Hyuk asked, before she could. Did he read my mind? Actually, yes. You could have changed things or wanted or warned him. Conflicts, large and small, always occur at work. Superiors can't interfere every time. Not until the fight bubbles up to the surface, like it did with a proposal. In other words, individuals needed to take care of their own issues. However, Jiwon inter interpreted it that oh my gosh, Jiwon interpreted this differently. He's saying he can solve it if the problems surface right. Today's evening's tea time was worth it. She learned a monumental clue. It somewhat alleviated her guilty conscience. How long will you be gone? It depends. If business goes smoothly, 10 days. But if the issue gets extended, a month or even longer. I hope business is smooth, Jiwon muttered. She didn't want to catch Jung Uk throw fits for that. She didn't want to watch Jung Uk throw fits for that long. Excuse me for a moment. Ji Hyuk suddenly leapt to his feet. Was he going to the bathroom? Jiwon sipped coffee through her straw. She glanced out the window and noticed a group of men walking towards the cafe. She hadn't been looking at anything in particular, but they stood out. Other people snuck glances at them as well. It was understandable. Ten bulky men, all at least six feet tall. They all sported similar black suits, shoes, and short haircuts. It would be stranger if they didn't attract attention. What are you looking at? Ji Hyuk asked when he returned. At that moment, the group of men moved to enter the cafe. I was watching those people enter right now, she murmured. They look like gangsters from a movie. The cafe door opened. All the customers' gazes swiveled to the men who streamed in. Excuse me again. Ji Hyuk stood and walked away a few steps. Then he returned to pull his phone from his briefcase. He disappeared into the bathroom. Apparently, he needed to make an urgent call. The men all stood in front of the counter, scowling. The man in the middle lifted his phone to his ear. Yes, boss. It sounded like the standard gangster speech in movies. Deciding not to make eye contact, Jiwon pretended to skim her notebook. However, she couldn't cover her ears. She overheard the men's conversation. Really? Oh, yes. Then, yes, I'll tell them. Head home safely, boss. The man hung up. Boss wants to act like we don't know him. Right now? Another man asked why. He said to do what he orders without complaint. At that point, Ji Hyuk returned. The men's conversation stopped as well. Let's go, Ji Hyuk said. Already? She asked. Ji Hyuk placed their three quarters full cups into the tray and threw it away. Ji Wan stood and followed Ji Hyuk out. It must have appeared strange because the men stared at them the whole time. Just a minute, I'll go bring my car. Ji Hyuk glanced behind him and froze for a second. Actually, let's go together. The parking lot isn't far from here. Ji Hyuk walked faster than usual. He always walk quickly because he had long legs but tonight he moved like the wind jiwon chased after him like a tiny bird chasing a stork click the heel the high heel she had barely gotten used to caught on something her body tilted forward she gasped miss kang before ji hyuk could do anything jiwon instinctively stretched out a hand her knee slamming to the ground so embarrassing oh that's why she looked like that Horror and shame rushed over her. At first, it didn't hurt. Jiwon kicked off her shoes, kicked off her shoe. Her face flushed bright red. Miss Kang, are you all right? Ji Hyuk didn't worry about dirtying his suit. He bent down on one knee to observe Jiwon's injuries. Her stockings were ripped and blood seeped out of her wounds. It's okay. Let's go, Mr. Yu. Jiwon clutched his arm and wobbled to her feet. All she wanted to do was get out of this situation. She felt like the neighborhood laughing stock. Can you walk? I would be so embarrassed. I already know how she I I can feel her pain. 
how cruel the heavens were. The heel on her shoe was broken. Aw, oh, damn. Hanging on by a thread. It was difficult enough walking with the intact heels. There was no way she could walk in these. I'll walk in my bare feet. It's fine. She tugged off the other shoe and carried it, ready to walk to the parking lot in her bare feet. Miss Kang. Ji Hyuk grasped Ji Won's arm. He hesitated for a moment, then quickly apologized. Excuse me. Excuse me? Wow, what do you guys say excuse me for? I think we all can kind of figure out what he's about to do, but you know, we'll wait. We'll wait till chapter 30. That was really creepy. But I think Ji Hyuk knows them. It's so weird. Like, why does he, why is he making her like speed up though? Like, is somebody after him? What is going on? But okay, top comments. I'm going to try not to read ones that seem like spoilers like the last episode because that's some BS, but <clears throat> I thought something worse had happened. Thank God she only tripped. True. I thought she got beat up uh, the way that they described her. I'm like, oh my God, no. Jihyuk on that mafia shit for real, for real. See, th it, that's what I'm like. Now he knows them. Is Jihyuk a gang member? D didn't see that coming. Also, Minwon not listening to his friend because he thought this friend was just being jealous. Idiot. Okay. Idiot. Stupid ass. His friend tried to warn him. I feel like maybe if he would have done it when he talked to his friend, he might have got some of his money back before it broke on the news. After it broke on the news, it was all over for him. But he is so stupid. And his friend told him about this person before. Like, why didn't you, hey, like, reach out to your friend and be like, hey, you remember so-and-so? What is it that you told me about him again? But no, not this dumbass. He just saw dollar signs and was like, yep, let me throw all my money at it. But that's how people begin swindled. But anywho, we'll be um, on chapter 30 in the next part. <laughs> I'll see you then. It's me and we're back with chapter 30 and it's titled Heels. <laughs> I still can't get over that. She looked that beat up because she fell. I really thought like they got jumped and he tried to save her and that's how she ended up like that. But now we know the truth. But anyways, pardon? What? Ji Hyuk's suit jacket came down over Ji Won's head and wrapped her over around her shoulders. She could smell his scent through the fragrances of his cologne and soap. Her body stiffened and surprised. At the same time, Ji Hyuk lifted her into the air. Put me down. Everybody's looking, she cried. The parking lot is right across the road. Please hold on. He strolled toward forward with Ji Won in his arms. Ji Won wanted to dissolve into dust. But that would be impossible until she died for the second time. <laughs> she raised Ji Hyuk's jacket to cover her face and hunched her long arms and legs. Thump, thump, thump. Unintentionally, she pressed closer to Ji Hyuk's heart. It beat roughly and rapidly. She suspected he had an arrhythmia. How much longer, she murmured, her face still covered. Ji Hyuk's arms tensed almost there. But why did it feel like his steps were slowing? Jiwon brewed in anxiety, her face buried in his jacket. She never knew she would miss the days of being trapped in Jihyuk's uncomfortable car. Beep! She finally heard the remote key. Jihyuk set Jiwon in the passenger seat. Then he brought a small box from the trunk. Can you put that, uh, you can put that over your, oh, can you put your legs out? Oh my gosh. Jiwon tentatively extended her injured legs. This will sting a little. 
He pulled out a small pair of scissors and snipped her torn stockings. After wiping her wound with antiseptic and applying some ointment, he swathed her in bandages. He moved quickly and efficiently, like a doctor, as if he had done this more than once. Jiwan glimpsed various emergency medications inside the box. Didn't you hurt your hand too? Ji Hyuk asked. Jiwan moved her injured hand behind her back. I can do it. I'll take care of it at home. I can probably do it better, or we can go to a hospital. After a pause, Jiwan held out her hand. Ji Hyuk placed his hand beneath hers. Her hand was on the larger side. But compared to Ji Hyuk's, it looked like a maple leaf. Ji Hyuk carefully wiped the wound on her hand with antiseptic too. Her fingers twitched at the stinging pain. Does it hurt? A little, but it's okay. Ji Hyuk blew softly on it. Done. When Ji Hyuk le left to return the emergency kit to the trunk, she put his jacket on his seat. A folded piece of paper fell out of the pocket. It was a receipt from the department store dated yesterday. She recognized the designer brand. The receipt showed he purchased a lipstick and mascara. Lipstick bought yesterday? She flinched. You should keep it. I tested it yesterday at home and it didn't suit me. <clears throat> her heart crashed to the ground. The driver's side door burst open. Jiwon crumpled the receipt in her fist. Just a moment. Ji Hyuk picked up his jacket and disappeared again. Alone, Jiwon opened her bag. She put the receipt inside and placed the lipstick she'd received from Hu Yeon in the door compartment. Then she stepped out of the car. The chill from the parking lot. Oh, the chills from the parking lot ground climbed her legs. People glanced sideways at her because of her ripped stockings and bare feet. Jiwon looked straight ahead and stepped into the street. Almost everyone in the area stared, including the group of men from the cafe earlier. Huh? That lady, the largest man pointed at Jiwon. The rest of the man ex men exclaimed, huh? Where's she going in that state? Weird. Should we call the boss about this? He said not to act like we know him, though. While the men argued among themselves, Jiwon got into a taxi. This won't do. Since you're the youngest, you call him. A man much too large to look like he's the youngest made a pitiful expression. Huh? Who will carry out my commemorative rites if I die? <laughs> You're Catholic. The youngest pulled out a cute sliding phone and pressed number one on the speed dial. What? Talk quietly. I'm busy. The other men all held their breaths. Um, boss? About that lady from earlier? Didn't I say to act like you don't know me? The boss snapped. Well, uh... That lady just left in a taxi. Click. <laughs> the call ended. Is something wrong, sir? The employees putting a pair of high heels into a shopping bag observed Ji Hyuk's stiff expression. No, here's my card. Ji Hyuk paid for the shoes and left the store. He called Ji Won on the way to the parking lot, but she didn't answer. When he arrived, the car was empty. Huh. <laughs> Ji Hyuk leaned against the empty passenger seat inside. His forehead dripped in sweat and his hair neat with the, was a mess from all the running. Why do things always end like this? He loosened his tight tie. When he undid the top button of his shirt, he finally felt like he could breathe. He touched his face and smiled warily, realizing he wasn't wearing any glasses to take off. Ever since high school, he always wore glasses during the day. Although he had perfect vision, he had taken them off, but it didn't f yield any results. Jiwon was focused on something else. He thought it must be fate. Although there had been a time when he'd firmly de denied fate's existence. Now he didn't know what to think. His phone vibrated. Seeing the caller, Ji Hyuk furrowed his brow and answered, What now? Are you all right, boss? He groaned. <laughs> Why would you guys ask that? Because of our love and respect, boss. Although you were embarrassed by us. <sighs> Do you have something to say? He interrupted. Yes, the caller shouted. About the club in Gangnam that's opening soon. The CEO called and wants to meet in person. When? The caller cleared his throat. <clears> throat> he said to come by any time. 
Tell him I'll stop by tomorrow night. Yes, sir. See you tomorrow night. The exhaustion from going to work after spending the whole night awake crashed down on him all at once. He shut his phone and threw the shopping bag in the trunk. That's why he's always napping. It's starting to clickety click up here. <laughs> These were the first pair of women's shoes he'd ever purchased. One of the heels Jiwon had worn was lying in the passenger seat floor. She walked out in bare feet with torn stockings. He could picture her stumbling through the middle of Gangnam in that state, then getting in a taxi. So stubborn. Jihyuk laughed in disbelief and started the engine. She'll probably think I'm a stalking madman if I show up at her house right now. Debating, he left the parking lot and turned in the direction of Concook University. He used to need he just needed to make sure she arrived home safely. He'd only felt at ease once he knew she was safe. Since I won't get a third chance. Third chance? Okay. He drove at full speed and arrived in front of Jiwan's apartment just in just in time to see her. Or to be exact, he saw her in her bare feet, being helped inside by Minwan. He stopped the car and watched. The door to the villa opened. Lights automatically switched on and illuminated the man and woman's shadows. I thought they were growing distant. Jiwan must have gotten in a taxi as soon as Minwan contacted her. Jihyuk ran a hand over his face. These hands had momentarily carried Jiwan. He closed his eyes, but he couldn't see her warmth anymore. He couldn't feel her warmth anymore or smell her scent. This time... He let out a long sigh. <sighs> I'm netting, never letting you have her. He opened his eyes again, veins protruding from his hands where he gripped the steering wheel tightly. What happened? Minwan asked. My heel got stuck in the sidewalk. I tripped. Leaning on Minwan's arm, Jiwan arrived at her apartment door. She had barely convinced him not to carry her upstairs. I'll head in now, Minwan. Jiwan waved a hand with her back to the door. However, Minwan didn't leave. He fidgeted where he stood. What is it? Do you have something to say? She asked, hoping he would get lost. Jiwan. Yes? I got scammed, he said. Of course you did. Jiwan covered her mouth with one hand and feigned shocked. What? What are you talking about? For how much? <laughs> 40 million. Ah, 40 million won. I lost everything I invested, all because of that bastard Yong Tae Ho. Yong Tae Ho? Sounds like a scammer. She wondered how Min Wan had known. How? It's that technology or whatever, right? She asked. He groaned. We can talk about the specifics later. I came because I have something to say. S something to say? Before she died, Minwan often released an onslaught of expletives at her and broke things any time he lost money in stocks. Suddenly, fear seized her. Jiwan wrapped her arms around herself. However, oh my God. However, Minwan only smiled. Let's go meet my mom next weekend. Jiwan stared at him. She didn't understand the connection between him losing all his money in the stocks and meeting his mom. You came to say that? I know you don't. You didn't accept my proposal because of my money or abilities, right? So let's go meet her. I'll tell my mom. I see. Kind, frugal, stupid Jiwon Kang, Minwon thought Jiwon belonged to him. So when he lost his money, he feared losing his pushover too. Why aren't you saying anything? He asked. Don't worry about our house. We can start out renting. Since we both work, we'll be able to save enough money to buy soon. Jiwon added another description to what Minwon thought about her. Kind, frugal, stupid, money-earning Jiwon Kang. Okay? Jiwon raised the corners of her mouth. I've heard people lose money and make it big again all the time in the stock world. I know you'll do well again. Don't worry. We'll meet your mom next weekend. Minwan was a ma mama's boy. He would listen to anything his mother said. If the woman he was interested in made a bad impression on his mother, he wouldn't mention marriage, marriage again for a long time. 
Then Suman could insert herself into their cooled relationship, and finally, this draining game of hot potato would end. Thanks, I knew you say that, Jiwon. Minwon gazed at her with a moved expression. Once again, Jiwon realized how much of a pushover she'd been. How lowly must he consider her? He planned to propose when he didn't even have two cents to rub together. Her past life was so pathetic. Good morning! Hu Yian cheerfully greeted, awoke, uh, <laughs> awoke the grave-like office. You're in a good mood as always, Joran said. Yes, I am, Hu Yian beamed. You're here, Miss Jung, <laughs> Jiwan asked. Yes, Miss Kang. Hu Yian sat down. As soon as she opened her computer and signed into her work messaging platform, a new conversation opened with the ding. Miss Yu, are you busy? It came from, you know, Jung Yuk Uk. What bullshit does he plan to pull today? Hu Yian typed a response, slightly on edge. I'm just finishing up the unit cost models on the companies you asked for yesterday. Take your time. It's not urgent, he replied. She frowned. You told me to give you the report today. Internally, she added, you said you wanted it first thing in the morning, you octopus head. <laughs> but again, he answered breezily. It's fine. Take it easy. More importantly, I have something to say to you. Come to the meeting room. Hu Yian stretched her neck to look into the meeting room. She saw a big shiny head through the glass door. Strange. Very strange but she'd be fine as long as she kept her mind sharp. Even if her head was in the octopus's mouth, she entered the meeting room and sat, feeling apprehensive. You're surprised I summoned you so suddenly, huh? jung Uk asked. His voice sounded slimy as seaweed. Hu Yian preferred when he threw papers at her and shouted, Yes, uh -huh. do you have orders for me? Orders? <laughs> Makes it sound unpleasant, doesn't it? His eyes crinkled. He was trying to act friendly, but unfortunately, he failed horribly. You know, I think highly of you, right? No. <laughs> Jong Uk blinked, taken aback by Hu Yian's honest answer, but soon he laughed magnanimously. I, le I like you. You crack good jokes. You're precise with your work and you're tactful. That's why I hope you'll become a regular employee. What words made a contract employee's ears prick faster than regular employee? Jung Uk's smile widened as Hu Yian's unconscious, ugh, unconsciously flinched. Wow. And that was the end of chapter. 30 it's good it, it's it's getting so good already but there's so many chapters uh, so we're gonna end it here for this bundle of chapters so chapters 26 27 28 29 and 30 all really good uh we've seen that suman is pissed that jiwan is about to get married so she thinks so does joran well everybody does at this point um minwan got scammed and he actually was told before like his friend told him hey stupid I told you that guy was a scammer. And then when his friend got pissed, but he didn't listen. He was like, no, oh, you're just jealous. Like a fucking imbecile. Um, Jiwon is still confused about Hu Yian and Ji Hyuk's relationship. Um, which it does seem like they are dating. They do seem like they are dating. Um, Joran 
Seems like she's starting to get a backbone when it comes to her husband. Her family uh, came, stepped in to help her out because her husband's a piece of shit and really expects her to do what he says of going into work early and coming home on time. No, bitch. Do fucking some housework. Work. Like, do some work, okay? If it's not out in the uh, real world, it's in our home. I'm gonna need you to clean, do something. He is so fucking annoying. She's got two kids at this point. Um, And then we have... <sighs> what is his name? Mr. Kim. Looking like he's trying to help Suman out with some stupid ass bullshit. <sighs> when she should just do what fucking Jaron asked her to do. Because it's not that hard. And she'll get a full time position. She won't. Obviously. Jiwon's like. it's <laughs> Jiwon added her on the team. So she could fuck up and <laughs> get herself fired basically. So we'll see how this all plays out. But if you've enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment leave high heels a lipstick um money or stocks like this graph or the stocks or um what was the other one i was gonna say oh an octopus <laughs> but uh please like comment or subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.